Hey guys, Saint 8 here. So today I've got a little special run here. Uh, I forgot to uh, I forgot to record the commentary for it. So this is gonna be post commentary. Also, I'm gonna be cutting it up a little bit to make the video a little bit shorter. That way we just get the interesting details. So we're playing chicken, and I'm using the chicken sword. But here's the twist: I'm using just the chicken sword. I'm using this little wet noodle of a weapon. It, it comes with a lot of its own challenges, but for our first mutation, uh, I pick up Patience here because none of these mutations really spoke to me. Stress, maybe, but not really. We're, we're looking for Long Arms and Scarier Face. Those are the two mutations. So, the Big Bandit fight. Big Bandit fight, I uh, bait out the charge for most of his attacks. That way I can get multi-hits to speed up this fight as much as possible. Because the longer the big fan, uh, bandit fight goes, the more in trouble I'll be. So with that being said, big bandit goes down pretty easily. Then we move on to the sewers with long arms. And... One moment here, once I pick it. And scarier face. This lets me one-tap the rats at a safe distance. Making the sewers a lot easier for us. A lot easier. But we're also hitting the point where some enemies are taking many swings just to take down. And of course you might be saying, just throw your weapon. If I throw my weapon, there's a high chance that I'm not able to get it back in most of these levels. So, after the sewers, we pick up Strong Spirit. Nice defensive mutation that I really enjoy. It'll keep us from, you know, accidentally killing ourselves with cars or anything like that, or getting one-tapped by assassins. But we're also encountering the main problem of, uh, the main mobs taking two hits to kill. Also, for our fourth mutation, we didn't really get a useful one here. Uh, all of these mutations didn't really help my current situation, so I end up just picking back muscle. But I'll take this moment while in-game me is deciding to just say, the big dog fight's coming up. Big dog, I'm not too worried about. I'm more worried about the, uh, the arena we fight in, being big and open. Of course, with the chicken sword, it's a melee weapon, as you know, most melee weapons are able to deflect bullets, and they do uh, multiple hits on moving enemies. So big, da uh, big Dog is really easy to take down. I mean, really easy. You just smack him, and he's done. But that's not what I'm worried about. What I'm really worried about is this next level, the Crystal Caves. So, the Crystal Caves, uh, these little crabmen, uh, take three swings. These are the basic enemy, and they're starting to take three swings. This is very bad for us, but we get through it. And we end up picking Impact Wrist, because the more enemies that are there, and the more that fly into each other, that's less damage I have to deal with my wet noodle of a stick. So, we move on to the Frozen Waste. All enemies are starting to take two or more hits. So I'm more worried about the uh, the snowbots with cars. So on 5-2, we end up taking a hit by an explosion and then losing our strong spirit to one of those snowbots. So we're in a bit of a risky situation here with the little hunter fight coming right up. We weren't able to get full health, so we're not going to have strong spirit for the little hunter fight. However, I do get a mutation here. I do get Rhino Skin. Rhino Skin is the only good mutation here for us right now at this very moment. You could make a case for Last Wish, but that's only temporary. Rhino Skin will carry us way further down. Plus, we have to start thinking about the palace. So, with the Little Hunter fight, I try to bait him into a corner as much as possible, and luckily, we were able to do that. The only thing I'm worried about for the little hunter fight is the explosion at the end. Because we can usually deal a lot of damage deflecting his own bullets against them, and the fire couldn't really affect us because of our swing speed. So, with that, Frozen Wasteland is conquered. Now, on to the labs. Originally, I didn't think about how I would handle the labs, but it appears the uh, fish creatures only take one swing to take down, and I'm not really worried about the exploder dudes. I'm more worried about the rhino skin guys, because to see how many, how many swings they take. I start throwing my weapon at them, even though usually I don't really like to throw my only weapon. But with that being said, we make it through the labs. 
And on to the last level, the palace. This is what I'm worried about, the palace. The palace is extremely worrying, but we pick up trigger fingers to help deal with the IDPD that spawn at the start of the level. Which is pretty convenient. But as I was saying, the palace, the guardians, they take five swings to kill. The exploder guardians take also a bunch of damage to kill. The dogs take even more damage to kill. There's bullets everywhere. The dogs will murder us if they ever touch us. It's a very, very worrying level. Just look at how many swings it's taken to try to kill this dog. It is ridiculous. I'd be ashamed to the ATF. Just look at me. Can't even put down a single dog without 50 swings, man. It's, it's bad. But, that being said, we'll make our way through the palace and we finally find our way to... Well, first off, I pick up Rag uh, Rabbit Paw here because I want more health drops from uh, from the orbs, the, the throne spawns. But we make it to the throne fight. And when I say this fight took forever, I'm not exaggerating. Like, at all. This fight, after we started here, this fight is, is a doozy. He's got a bunch of health. He's got a lot of health. And he shoots a lot of projectiles and does a lot of contact damage. This is our ultimate challenge for this run, is taking this bad boy down. Thankfully, we have Scarier Face, so it's not as bad as it could have been, but it still takes forever. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up all that footage. I'm not joking when I say this fight took me like four and a half minutes, almost five. It's bad. I was chucking my sword at the generators to get rid of the generator as fast as humanly possible. And the reason why I took down the generators is originally for this run I wanted to go and take down the IDPD captain, but uh, well, uh, you'll you'll see what I mean by whenever I say I I couldn't do that here here in a bit. But this fight still took forever. Like I had, it, it's it was it was nasty. It was a nasty fight. But let's see here, where is the footage at right now? Alright, there it is. So, we, we finally make our way through the throne fight with all these swings, all these throws. And just around the corner, with one throw, he finally goes down. Look at him go. Gone. Reduced to atoms. I killed the throne. Don't really care about the weapon, even though I should have. And, uh, and here we are. We officially looped. With only the chicken sword. That being said, though, we have one last fight before I would even consider us fully looped. The Throne 2 fight. This fight also took extremely long. So long, in fact, that uh, halfway through, the music stops playing. It, it was just a pain. It was a pain to get through. He stays at a distance. Uh, does a bunch of contact damage, a lot of projectiles, just an absolute pain in the ass fight. Like it, it was, it was stupid. Even though he has less, less health than the throne fight, uh, he still takes a lot of damage. And then I do something stupid. Watch this. Watch me be dumb. He jukes me, and I lose my sword. My only means of damage gone. Into the void forever. Oh, let me tell you, I was heartbroken at that point. I was heartbroken. So, I took the only way out I knew I could. Trying to fight a mono a mono with my bone. But, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you guys. L-A-T-E-R. Later.